to my presentation about Bush geometry. Uh, in the schedule, it uh, says that it's also presented by Matthäus Loscott. Uh, but alas, he could not make it because his girlfriend is pregnant and it's in, uh, due in a few weeks. So he didn't want to leave his girlfriend uh, alone for a whole week. And that's totally understandable. So I will do it uh, now on my own. Uh, this is our program. Uh, it's a C++ library, so this is C++ code. If you don't uh, use C++, it's not really a problem because I will not really go into all the details. But uh, yeah, just um, some introduction. Uh, first some introduction, then I will uh, uh, have a slide or two about the usage that's in C++. Then a uh, large uh, number of slides about uh, algorithms and some testing and uh, community. Uh, Boost geometry contains algorithms for uh, geometries. Um, in the next slide I have some comparable libraries. Many people know such a library and then you, you can place it better. It's based on generic programming. Um, yeah, it, it is uh, not, have, uh, it's not assuming things about your uh, own program types. This what is the key selling points, unique selling points, it requires no mo point model. That's also in comparison with other libraries. You don't have to convert your point, you can just use your point or polygon. It's a lower level library and you can customize it and you have uh, more control in certain aspects. We will also see that. And it's header only, so you don't have to link it or um, ha have complex linking things. It's uh, all compiled and runs. Comparable libraries, uh, probably everyone knows the Java topology suite. Uh, it's already existed <coughs> for a long time, that's in Java, Geos. Th they, they have a similar, not exactly similar of course, but a similar interface and also uh, the .NET library, which is also in SQL Server. Or Seagull is also a comparable library, GPC, Clipper, there are more. We follow the standard library that is uh, in C++, uh, the library most programmers are using, uh, containing a lot of uh, useful stuff. And we are part of the Boost uh, community, so we also follow Boost conventions, of course. And OGC, uh, our interface is based on OGC. Uh, that is uh, Open Geodata Spatial, no, Open Geospatial Consortium. Uh, this is our team. Uh, I indeed took the initiative uh, uh, several years ago. Bruno Lalande is from France. He now lives in, uh, in the UK. But he could not uh, be here too. Matteo Zoschot uh, and Adam Vukovic just uh, or this year joined too. And there are some contributions from other people too. The community, we have an, uh, an own Boost Geometry mailing list. It's uh, about 150 subscriptions, uh, mail traffic nearly every day. Uh, there are also sometimes questions on the general Boost mailing list. Actually, I didn't introduce, introduce Boost. Um, Boost is for C++ a uh, collection of libraries uh, that everyone can use. Uh, <coughs> it's totally uh, free, this free as in beer. It's no GPL, they, they have an own software license and they have a review process. So uh, it's not like um, SourceForge where you can uh, put everything in and now uh, first you have to be accepted and then uh, it's incorporated in the library. So many things about Boost. Uh, Boost has also a ticket system where you can file bugs. There's a uh, IRC hangout. There are also sometimes questions on Stack Overflow. So it's, it's used more and more. Um, in 95, the history go back already uh, to 95. I worked at Udon at, time, at that time, like some of the people here. Um, and we, have, uh, we had a library uh, that was not based on templates. In 2008, we uh, updated the library, modernized it, and thought, well, that's uh, suitable for open source. 
So we did a preview for Boost and they uh, seem to like it, but it still needs many changes. So we have four previews. And in November 2009, it was reviewed and accepted by the Boost geometry, uh, by the Boost community. After that, uh, there were some still some things to be done. So uh, in 2011, uh, it was for the first time incorporated in Boost. And now it's there already each quarter or four months, there's a new version of Boost. And usually there are also updates of Boost geometry. Uh, the review period was, uh, yeah, I can say a heavy period with uh, many mail traffic about uh, all opinions, etc., etc. In the end, there were 13, 14 reviewers and most of them voted yes. Uh, so it was accepted under several conditions. And they also l especially liked the design uh, which we made. Um, Bruno Lalande has also a special uh, contribution to the design because we uh, arranged many things uh, different as, as was in the pre first preview. The challenges is uh, to build it generic. Uh, we will see that there are many, many possibilities. We see that in the next slide to, to manage all those possibilities. It should be fast, it should also be robust, you no know, uh, floating point issues. Um, and also limit the scope because geometry is a huge subject and you can build probably for all your life about uh, in such a library. So you have to uh, decide what's important and at the same time also satisfy many users. So the basic concepts, um, these are OGC things, so open, uh, open GIS, open uh, geospatial. Uh, it's all about point, a line string and a polygon. Or the multi-versions, multi-point, a multi-line string for example, a broken highway or a multi-polygon. So these things belong together. They have, for example, one attribute. Those are uh, more or less prescribed by uh, OGC. Um, so we follow that. So you miss here, for example, a circle, ellipse, an arc. That's uh, in some extensions we have it, but it's not, at least not yet, uh, supported in, uh, in the published library. So we follow the OTC conventions here. We have also some helper uh, geometries because a line string is built of segments. Yeah, we of, of course then also need a segment. And a polygon is built uh, based on ring, so we need a ring and uh, we need a bounding box, uh, etc. And OTC also has a multi geometry that's a collection of uh, different things. There we call it different because we um, use boost variant which can also be the same thing, it can be anything, um, but it's still type-checked. So we call it a variant or a multivariant. Or we don't call it, we use it. Um, in the one of the first slides we said we are agnostic uh, with respect to many things. So we are, for example, agnostic with respect to orientation. A polygon can be clockwise or counterclockwise. And it can also be uh, closed or open. Uh, for example, in the first <coughs> version, that was not the case. But people said, well, we cannot use it because we have just the other orientation. So we had to be agnostic about that. So we support both. Well, let's look at the basic uh, structure. Uh, who can s program C++ so that such that I can uh, get an impression? Oh, OK, most of them. Can or can a bit or yeah. Um, so this is actually the the, the, be the one of the key points of the library. Uh, you have your own struct. You don't have to d define it for it. Uh, this is just an example. You have it already probably because most of the people who use GIS have uh, their own struct. So for example, the struct looks like this. Then you adapt that struct. Uh, that is explained. Uh, well, not really in details, but it's explained later. And then you can just use it. So you can just use a standard vector, uh, C++ vector of those points, and uh, use some boost geometry stuff, and uh, use the length of the line. So uh, th th that is one of the unique select points of the library. You can use your own structs. And you can also use really old-styled C arrays, for example, 
and calculate the distance of a vector to this struct. So these are two completely different structs, but still they can be uh, compared to the library. This is the whole program. This also illustrates that boost geometry, um, you can use, it is header only, so it's really lightweight. And you can use only a little uh, a bit of it if you want. So if you only need the distance, you can only use the distance. And you don't have a large library with, uh, to link this. So you can only use only one or two things. Or you can everything, of course, what you want, whatever you want. Uh, this is another example. Uh, it's somewhat more complicated. Uh, you have a we have also our own uh, models, of course, uh, because people can use their own, own point model, but to test only, we have also our own point model, which we can use. So we have a polygon of our point model. This is in two dimensions with having X and I. We read the WKT, probably everyone knows that, and we support it, so uh, that's handy for reusers, but also for ourselves to test with. Uh, this is broken here because it was too long for the slides. Uh, we declare a standard uh, library um, variable to get the output and we compute the spatial intersection. And then we display it, but we usually you do other things with it. So it's also a complete program. Uh, so this is what we saw. Well, most things I've already explained. Geometries can be of any type, distance, any pair. Or the make thing returns a sort of constructor, uh, but we don't accept. Uh, do, do yeah. Well? We can already output uh, DSV, and that can be formatted more or like uh, in, in JSON format. Um, I don't know if we have an example for that. We cannot yet parse it. It's a good question and a good idea to, to support that too. We have some ASCII formats, indeed uh, WKT. We can write SVG, we can read and write uh, WKB, but JSON, uh, yeah, that's obvious, useful too. So we pro provide our own geometries, um, a generic one. I, I showed uh, X, Y, but we also have coordinate systems. This is Cartesian. We will come uh, back to that later. Or already having X, I, or boost tuples, which are also uh, heavily used. They are now also in the standard library in the new version of C++. Or, well, why use in X and I? You have also can also have color points. So in uh, a red, green, blue in a color cube and can calculate color distances from it. This is also possible. So let's start with distance again because, well, most programmers have at least once in their life uh, uh, programmed a function to calculate the distance between two points. So that's obviously uh, heavily used. Uh, we but the, the generic distance uh, function we have can also calculate the distance between a point and a polygon. And that's the shorter distance then. Time. And besides the Cartesian distance, we can also calculate the distance over a sphere. So, uh, as you probably, oh, that was a bit fast. Well, we saw it already. As you probably know, the distance over the sphere is not really the uh, shortest. Yeah, it is the shortest, but not really a straight line, it's a, a great circle. So, it's a curved line. And we can calculate the distance over that, or over the globe, because the globe is not a really a sphere, but a spheroid. And we have different uh, calculations. Uh, five minutes, that's always... Not already? <laughs> I just take the time, it was uh, <laughs> somewhat more, probably. Uh, the distance from Nottingham to Bangalore. <laughs> Uh, in different strategies, you get different distances. Now, what is the actual distance? Probably this one is most accurate, but it's also slower. So you can select whatever you want, uh, you wish. Do you want a fast calculation, but less precise, or a uh, precise calculation, but less less fast? I have to go. Uh, well, I skipped this one. Um, 
Well, for distance always, uh, programs use usually uh, leave out the square root because it's uh, very slow and usually if you compare distances, it's not necessary. So we can do that for Pythag Pythagoras, of course, but we can also do it for com uh, half a sign and then it's also somewhat s faster, so you have a fast distance over the Earth. Well, the same here, within, uh, point in polygon, uh, famous algorithm, but also you should uh, determine if a line is in a polygon or a segment, or a polygon in a polygon, or a polygon in a multi-polygon, or a point on a sphere inside a polygon. Because if it's really somewhere here or so, then uh, you cannot use the straight lines, you have really have to use the sphere. A simplify, this is not an OGC algorithm, but we support it using Duclos Poiker. It supported, uh, it makes uh, a complex form simpler. So you specify a maximum distance, for example, this distance, and the line uh, which had originally, for example, 500 points, has after that has uh, about 10 points or so. And we can also specify strategies you can uh, have, for example, not the distance, but the maximum of points. So it's a bit lower level, if you want. Well, I leave the so. We have also the, uh, the overlays, booleans, as they are sometimes called. So if you have two polygons, or a, a polygon, multi-polygon, then you can calculate the intersection. It also works for polygon and a line, str line string, or both together, or one but not in the other, or uh, in both but not uh, <laughs> in one of them but not in both. We can also calculate those. The implementation is probably uh, I wanted to say something else about performance. Uh, internally, we use uh, we have a spatial index now. S in short, since short, but internally uh, uh, we use partitioning. So if you have two poly two multi polygons, one green, one blue, we first divide, and you can calculate the intersection points between the two. We first divide it in two, and then we have the three groups: one left, one right, and a group of all. Uh, crossing polygons, and they should be matched with two. So you make it now simpler and faster. And we uh, continue with that in the horizontal uh, uh, level, or for, for the second level. And it's a bit like quad three, but not exactly like that. And uh, until in we, have, uh, we, we continue dividing the, two, the parts until we have a reasonable amount, for example, four, it's specifiable, or, or six, or 12. And then we use, uh, we compare all together. And the group falling in both boxes is also always compared to both of them, of course. And then intersection points, for example, can be calculated much more easy. And it doesn't work only for intersection points, but it's also a generic algorithm, so you can also use it to assign things or to do other things with that. Besides, Partitioning, we have also internally sectionalizing. Sectionali yeah, sectionalizing. And that breaks the polygon up in uh, monotonic sections. So this is one section. So if you are uh, here, you have only to think about that part and forget the rest of the polygon because that's outside your scope at that moment. It's now exactly 20 minutes, no? <laughs> yeah? Sectionalizing is part of the indexing. No. It can, be it can be used together with the spatial index, but it's not part of it. So it's in more or less independent. Um, we, uh, yeah. <coughs> well, we have some algorithms. This is uh, one of the last slides. We have point properties, so the centroid or generate me any point on the border, that can be sometimes interesting, or generate any point on the surface, but it should be inside the polygon. The centroid is not always inside the polygon, uh, as you probably know. Or generate the convex hull, so that is a uh, convex polygon uh, exactly <coughs> fitting among the, the polygon or the envelope. 
or the minimum bounding circle and this is not yet implemented therefore it's cursive and the, the votes were now that to call that also envelope because well the return type only de defines um, make the distinction already so it can also be a circle a circle is now an extension so this is not already there and this is also in progress uh, but it's uh, showing how the buffer will look like because we can specify a distance strategy for left and right so such that we support asymmetric distance and also the end strategy so such that we have straight borders or uh, I don't know how they are called block borders or round borders and also specify the joint strategy so that you have such you have round corners or sharp corners or you can specify your own uh, strategy for example doing things like this uh, if you want so that's the lower level part of the library well, I, s I said this already and a uh, special index is now there so that well fits the library because we have the same uh, use the same words and it of course it uses the library and uh, so we have a special index library which can be built up with many polygons or lines or multipolygons or points and asks for intersection with the box so if it's intersect or if it's disjoint or covered by these are all OGC terms within mm. <laughs> <laughs> and one about lower level, so this is the distance. Uh, but we have also distance info which will be released, which doesn't only give the distance back from a point to a line string, but also the point of uh, the projection point, which is often asked for. And also uh, on which segment it's it lands and the distance between that segment. And for a polygon, it uh, does the same, but also says, well, this one is inside, but still gets the distance back. Are there already questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just a few minutes. A few short minutes. Short answers. Short, uh, <laughs> short questions, uh, short answers. That, uh, is a generic library, so yeah. there are lots of types for geometries. Yeah. But sometimes you just want one type to yeah. perform some generic calculation. Yeah. So you serial deserialize it, do some calculations, serialize it back. You don't want this different types. Is there something you can do with boost geometry? Uh, we, we don't convert. We support many point, point, point types, but we don't convert. Uh, we adapt. So you just uh, have your own point type, and you can use. You have to write on a sort of traits adapter, and you can use boost geometry. So no, you I mean there's no need for serialization or deserialization. I, mean, I don't care if it's a polygon or a line string. Can I work with it uh, just as one type? Uh, that's the variant then. Variant. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's type array type. Uh, it's not type array. Uh, that's the boost variant. Uh -huh. I don't think it's type array. Uh, you have options for it. Uh, boost variant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I have qu two questions. One is what's license of that, and another is. Uh, more technical one, do you plan to support more complex uh, objects also, like uh, 3D meshes and this kind of thing? Okay. Triangulation. Yeah. Uh, good questions. The bu uh, this, uh, Boost has its own license, its Boost software license. It's very open, so you m basically can use it everywhere, commercial or not commercial, binary uh, forms, even without mentioning uh, the Boost license. So th the license is quite open. Uh, and yes, we are uh, planning to support more features, for example, those uh, circle, uh, circular features or ball and three-dimensional. Uh, the design of the library supports three-dimensional and we have also some algorithms, for example, distance. But uh, many algorithms are not yet uh, int implemented in 3D. And triangulations and meshes uh, are mentioned. There are no immediate plans, but I think uh, it's often asked, so I think it will be uh, planned uh, too. Yeah. Sorry, but I have to. Have a short question. Or Very short question. Okay. Last question. <laughs> are you running away after this? Can we ask you more questions? Uh, uh, I'm uh, running away. What? Sorry. Can we ask you more questions? Yeah, yeah, you can ask me more questions. Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, in the last slide, uh, I have my own, uh, my meal, uh, I had many more slides, <laughs> but... <laughs>
Oops. Okay, I, I will give you my card. 